so all of this uh, talk of lighting and cameras and stuff is all very well but so far we haven't pulled any of it together yet and that's exactly what we're going to do now we're going to talk about something called three-point lighting which is probably about the most basic lighting setup uh, that you can do so what I'll do is first of all three-point lighting is based around a camera so I'll pick a viewport or a view that I quite like here in the perspective and I'm going to press Control and C to create a camera from my viewport and we'll just tweak the position of it there and I'll make it a 35 millimeter camera okay then back in my four views I'll make one of these a perspective and from my reselect that from my render setup dialog I'm going to lock the camera viewport so now whenever I render doesn't matter which viewport I'm in I'm always going to render the camera view so there we go we know how to do all of this okay so what I'll do is I'll first of all create three spotlights so I'll say target spot and I'll say um, let's see um, one two and three and each one of these is going to have a specific job to do so this one is going to be from my modifier I'll rename it this one's going to be my key light this is going to be my fill light and this is going to be my backlight and they all have different jobs to do the key lights job is to simulate what I would say is the the daylight this is where all the shadows are going to come from this is where all the specular highlight is going to come from so that's the main light in our scene these two are simply for simulating bounced and reflected light so that's our scene if I was to render this now what I've got is a reasonably evenly lit scene um, but I'm getting shadows and, and highlights and bits and pieces in areas that I don't want okay now the specular highlights can be highlighted if you excuse the pun by coming into my materials editor and actually adding in some specular highlight and some glossiness onto there and then re-rendering and you'll see we're getting multiple sets of highlights here so first thing I want to do is get rid of them and to help me by the way you can see here the configuration that I've got these lights in key light is way up here fill light is coming in at a sort of a 10 degree angle but it's in terms of position you can see there's my key light and there's my fill light so they're coming in from sort of different sides of the camera and then the backlight is almost facing the camera and again with a slight elevation so to help me select all of these lights quickly and easily and to make some basic changes to them I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to open up something called my light lister so there we go there's the light lister we'll open that up and you can see here we've got key fill and back and first of all I'm going to select my key light and you see its options appear here in my control panel okay now with my key light I'll start by saying I'll have a shadow map on that and my map parameters are fine and my shadow parameters are fine as well that's good that's all good um, my intensity color and attenuation you see I can change that here I'll do that in a moment uh, but what I want to do now is open up my advanced effects and then go to my fill light now you notice that when I click on fill everything in my modify panel stays that it stays the same it just switches lights so with the fill light I'm going to turn off specular and with the backlight I'm going to turn off specular and then I'll re-render and you see now we're only getting highlights from one direction so our object is beginning to feel like it's or my objects are beginning to feel as if they're being lit by sort of one one light source the only problem is is the fill light is giving way too much light this is way too overly blown on this this side I need to calm it down so it looks more like it's more even with that side so we now come to our, our light lister again and I'm going to change the multiplier levels for my lights now bear in mind these are starting ranges my backlight I would normally start as a range of 0.25 to 0.5 my fill light will be 0.8 to 0.1 so I'll say 0.85 in this instance 
and my main light, my key light, I'm going to take above a value of 1, so we've got 1.25. It's looking better, it's looking more evenly lit, but still, there's, there's just this feel of this extra light in there, and I really don't like that. I want to have control over all of the lights in the scene, and at the moment, I don't. I don't know if you remember, but a little while ago we spoke about the default light in 3D Studio Max. And I said, when you added light into the scene, people thought the default light was turned off. But it wasn't, it was still affecting elements in the scene that were being directly lit by lights. That's still the case. It's very much the case now. And I want to, I want to reduce the effect. I can't get rid of it, unfortunately. But I can reduce its effect right the way down. So I'll do that by coming to up here to Rendering, and then going to Environment. And you can see here we've got, we can, we'll close all this because we don't need to worry about that until we get into mental ray. But I've got here global lighting. Never touch the tint, don't ever touch the ambient either. Only ever change the level down to 0.5. Okay? You can't go below that because you'll make your lights work too much. You can't go above it because you get too much of, effect, of its effect coming in. If I now re-render, now what we're getting is it's a much lower light level of my scene, but I can pull that up myself. But what it is, is you can see it's a much better lit scene. Okay, so all I have to do is to come in and I'll make this 0 0.8. I'll make my fill maybe 1.2 and my backlight 0 0.65. And now I'll render it again. So I've upped all the lights in my scene and ah, this is looking a little bit different. We have definitely got a strong reflected light from this side. That's okay. What I might do is I might move my key light around to this side a little bit more. So, I'll kill it off, I can always come back to it. I might take this light and move him around here ever so slightly. We re-render that and you can see, yeah, this is a little bit better, more evenly lit. That's good. We're getting our highlights within the hot areas of the scene. Bring up my light lister. In actual fact, I think this could be a brighter scene, so I'm going to make this 2.5 and 1.5. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit, maybe a little bit too bright here, but still, that's looking a lot nicer than it was. So that's good, reasonably happy with that so far. And now I'm going to change the colours on here. This fellow is just very, very slightly yellow, and you can see that. I'm going to make him a bit more obviously yellow. But so are these. That's why the whole scene looks a bit yellow. If I want to simulate daylight, I'm going to make my bounced and my reflected light slightly blue, and my key light slightly yellow. You see there, I'm just dragging and dropping that colour swatch over. And then I'm going to render. So what we're getting here is a very nice mix of yellow, and that yellow is possibly a little bit too strong. Let me just bring that down a little while. That's better. Okay, what we're getting here is an interesting mix of yellow and blue light. Now, whereas you might think that yellow and blue will really recreate green, uh, it doesn't because we're talking about mixing light, not RGB color. So here we're getting a really nice, really great looking scene and it, it looks fantastic. I mean, if I was to make these a little bit more reflective, uh, so say for example, I come to my materials editor, I take so I put a bit of colour on them, uh, maybe make them um, a little bit bluish. There you go. And on top of this, maybe in my maps, I'll put a reflection map in here. Ray trace reflection, and we'll bring that right the way down to about twenty-two percent. And within my environment settings, this is all stuff that we've spoken about. I'll put a bitmap. And I'll just briefly go and find some bitmaps. Um, hang on a moment. Okay, so I'm in the backgrounds folder now. Um, but what might be interesting, Creek? Um, yeah, that'll do. back up to that. We'll turn that off and we'll press render again. So from three lights, 
and not a huge amount of effort and five seconds worth of render. We've got a really nice sort of look and feel to these lights here and they're looking uh, remarkably real. They're nice and evenly lit. We can see where the light is coming from. Um, it's, it's just, you know, really simple, really quick, really easy. And I would, as my first port of call, quite often just create a very simple lighting setup like this. Um, as I say, it's quick, it's simple, it's easy. You don't have to worry about it too much. And it, you know, it does the job.